This is the beginning of the Ravensburger Puzzle 759 Escape Room Puzzle, which we have just separated out edge pieces for. All these weird little things that they said we can throw away, but I'm not going to yet because it's an escape room puzzle. And so that might be part of the trick, but there's a lot of pieces. Ooh. All right, the escape room puzzle is making me want to escape. So they said that the actual picture is not the same as this, which we can see because here's the stool, there's no cat on it. And oh my gosh, I've been trying to get the edge pieces. We've been trying to get the edge pieces for way too many hours so far. <laughs> Always with the missing edge pieces. Yeah. Hmm. This is a challenging puzzle. Oh boy, I think maybe this grouping needs to go where I have this grouping. Let's see if that makes sense. Okay, using the spatula method that my friend Nadine taught me. Let's see if this makes sense. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So I need to remove those, which I thought initially fit. Hmm. So spoiler alert, I moved this piece over here, which makes sense. And then these things, which were here and seemed to fit, but obviously don't. Now I need to move this whole section because I thought this belonged there, but it doesn't. So maybe it goes over here somewhere. I don't know. But this whole thing now, when I move over here, will join up. Huzzah! Then we have to figure out what to do with these guys. But they'll probably go over here somewhere. All right, it's December 28th, 7 p.m. I will finish this puzzle before January 1st. I must. But man, oh man, there's still lots of pieces to find. And I still say this is no level two. I would like to take just a minute here as I'm working on this Ravensburger Escape Puzzle, 759 pieces that my friend Nadine Collier sent me a year ago, I think probably for my birthday in January, although I denied getting it. Probably because when I got it and looked at the instructions, I put it away immediately and thought, there's just no way I'm ever gonna do this by myself. Anyway, I started this puzzle with, uh, with family uh, just a couple days ago, today is the 29th of December, and I just wanted to let you know that I have used many of the lessons that Nadine, who gave me this puzzle, and I wrote about in our book, our award-winning book, Piece by Piece, 10 Lessons from a Jigsaw Puzzle. Because when you're doing a puzzle of this nature, and by the way, the image does not, is not reflective of exactly of what's on the, the cover. I'm still wondering if I'm gonna find a cat somewhere in there because there's a cat, there's a cat on, on the, the little stool in here, but I haven't seen the cat yet. Anyway, I've, it's, it's important that you, that you take some of these lessons to heart like patience and perseverance. Well, obviously, like walking away. I've had to walk away so many times from, from this because it's you just get so intense with staring at things. It's not good for your eyes. It's not good for your head. Anyway, it's good to like get outside and go for a walk, which we just did with our son's dog. And it was lovely. Asking for help. Help is fun. And again, it helped that our other son 
has been putting together some pieces off of the puzzle area um, while I've been working. And again, when groupings of puzzles get together, like little groups of things that you know, like these two things here, and if it gets to be a big group, you use the spatula to, to lift and place somewhere, wherever it goes. And this is really, really helpful. Again, Nadine told me about the spatula method of moving things. Anyway, looking below the surface, I haven't, I don't think I've dropped any puzzle pieces yet, but this is a glass table and I can see through it. So I don't think I'm gonna be missing any pieces. Anyway, different the, the different perspective, looking at things from a different perspective, very important because oftentimes when I leave, I'll come back and I'll sit on the opposite side of the puzzle. So I'm looking at it upside down and amazingly things just jump out at you and you just know exactly where to pick up a piece and put it somewhere. So anyway, just thought if you like puzzles and you know anyone who enjoys puzzling, our award-winning book, Piece by Piece, 10 Lessons from a Jigsaw Puzzle by myself and Nadine Collier, who is a licensed professional counselor, I think this will add to your puzzling enjoyment. So I'm not done with the puzzle yet. I still have lots of pieces left to find. Of course, now I'm getting down to the ones that are all the same color. So it'll be a little more difficult, but I'm enjoying it. And then of course, once it's done, I have to figure out, I have to figure out how to escape from the room because it's an escape room puzzle. And, and there's a, a white envelope inside. I'll come back later when I show you the white envelope, but that's got the answer in it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cheat. I'm not gonna look at the answer. I'm gonna do this the right way. Anyway, thank you for visiting. Enjoy your puzzling. I'm gonna finish this before the new year. So I won't say happy new year yet. I'll say happy new year when I finish the puzzle and January 1st, I guess I'll have to start on something else. <laughs> Stay well, everybody. Bye. It is 4.34 p.m. on December 29th and I'm about to place the last piece. <laughs> This has been about the most difficult puzzle. Oh, huzzah! Oh my goodness. This was a very challenging puzzle. And again, I'm going to complain that, that it says it's only level two. And you know what? There's no cat. There's no cat in here. And, and, and there's an owl in the cage there, but I see it peeking out. Where is it? Wow, it's cold. It is cold. Oh, I finished shit. I finished the puzzle. I'm filming. Oh. And there's an owl peeking out, and there's that guy, and there's a bird. There's no cat. There's no cat. So now I guess we have to figure out how to get out of the room. It's December 30th, and here's where I am with this puzzle. I completed putting it all together last evening, and then it was too dark for me to try to figure out any of the clues, because supposedly there are eight hidden clues in there to help you figure out a way to get out, and I don't even know about the trying to find a solution to, to, to helping me physically because of the mushrooms that I ate. Anyway, I spent some time with the box and with the puzzle. And I came up with lots of questions like, where's the cat? Like, how did the owl get out of the cage? Um, why is gray paper crumpled up in the corner down here and it's nice and flat over here? Uh, who moved the feather? Who bit a piece of this fruit over here? I don't even know if any of these are important. Who opened the left drawer that's not open in this thing? There's a broken egg on the floor. I'm assuming that it was the toad that broke it, but who knows, it could have been the cat. Let's see, who um, opened this, the scroll on the floor under the compass? And again, these questions might have nothing to do with anything. And the blue book is turned around, some cards are missing. So then I started looking at numbers because it said something about the edges. So all around the edges, there are, there are numbers. Uh, not every single one of the pieces, but there are lots of numbers. So I added them all up and I came up with 
83,602. Now, what I was supposed to do with that, I have no idea. So I disregarded that as being any kind of clue at all. And then I started noticing different, different um, equations in the puzzle. Uh, like the symbol N equals H, a weird symbol equals L, another symbol equals Z. So I've got, I've got a, an H and an L and a Z and an A and a G and an O and an E and an I and a U and a T. Now that's nine, that was like nine clues. It said that there are eight clues. So again, I don't know. This is not a level two puzzle. I'm, I'm gonna say it again. I'm just gonna keep saying that it's not a level two puzzle. Ravensburger, this is more like a six out of five. But, so with those symbols, I then saw that this book that's in the center, which is also in the center and open on the puzzle, has those symbols on it. And so I wrote those down. I'm doing a lot of work on it. I did a lot of work on this puzzle. I wrote those down, and then I put the corresponding numbers, uh, letters, under each of them, and they didn't make any kind of words. However, what they did make were words or letters that were the same as on three of the books that are in the puzzle. And each of those books has a number on the top. Like this one has an eight, that one has a three, and that one has a four. So I thought, aha, finally, I've, I've solved something. And so then I went back around the edges and I found an 834. Well, you can't see it, but way up here above the bat, there is a number 834. And there's a hole, well, right up here. There's, there's an opening, which I'm assuming that's my way out. <sighs> but I have not yet figured out how to counteract the poison mushroom I ate. And I, don't, I just don't even know if I'm willing to spend another hour trying to figure that out. But since I've already spent quite a bit of time doing numbers and math this morning and weird letters and books, I might as well make another attempt to see if I can figure out, because I'm a superwoman, figure out how I can save myself. So, hope you enjoyed this. This has been quite a challenge. I talked with my friend Nadine this morning, and I told her that I mentioned her in, in this video, and she asked if there were curses associated with name her name, and I said no. Kept those in my head. <laughs> see you later. I'll let you know if I have to cheat and open up the envelope. I might have to. We'll see. Okay, here are some other things I tried. I was looking for things pointing to numbers on the sides, like the bottle straw and the mouse's tail was pointing to the number 365, the compass was pointing to this number, open drawer was pointing, but, but, then, but then I just figured that anything could be said to be pointing to something. Like, you know, like I said, that the mouse's tail is pointing to that, so is the straw. But then, you know, it became ridiculous. Like, do I say that, that this feather is pointing to this number? But then what do those numbers mean? None of this makes any sense. So then, you know, I'm looking, and I've done escape rooms before with Nadine and her daughter and my sons and my husband. And so I started looking for other patterns, like we have yellow, blue, green, orange. And I'm thinking, okay, what can I do with that? The bright yellow, and I'm seeing that this book has a bright yellow title and it has the number one. Um, blue has the number, I don't know, zero? Or is it this blue down here, which has the number six? And then green, the bright green, this has, you know, this has, does that even have a number? Yeah, that has a number five. And then orange, and I wasn't sure where to go with the orange because we have, we have this over here, which is orange, and uh, and this down here. So it just got very confusing. And I don't know that I want to spend too much more time trying to figure out my potion. Although I did finally figure out what this thing was. I was looking at this, 
and it looks like a bowl. I love this frog, by the way. It looks like a bowl with oh, something really weird and disturbing coming out of it. But then I determined, oh, that's the mushroom. <laughs> Evidently that I ate. Maybe I have to eat that, and maybe that's my cure. Maybe I'll just go with that. But, like, here's where, uh, you know, one of those symbols was that weird symbol equals Z, you know, which which goes to one of the books. And over here on this open up drawer, we have the M equals E, you know, so these little things. But there are also lots of other things, like the two cards. You know, is that a 65? Does that mean that I should do something with this number 65 on on the stool where there is no cat anymore? Uh, I don't know. And, you know, these guys, what do I do with these guys? I don't know. It's too much. And what about this? What about the bottom of this pot? Which has, again, too many numbers. So, I don't know. I think I might see if husband and one of my sons wants to help me with it. Otherwise, I'm going to open up the envelope. Okay, I've already spent way too much time on this, and I even took more notes yesterday. And yes, I'm still wearing the same thing that I wore yesterday, and I haven't even showered. Maybe I'll shower next year, because it's the 31st of December, and this is driving me insane. So I took more notes. I figured out what, what the book read, and the, this book goes to these books. It's too much. There's too many numbers. I'm not going to do it. So I'm not going to open the envelope yet, but it does say that I can go online to get, to get some tips or some help. So I'm going to go online and get some help. Um, come on, I'll take you there. And remember, get a copy of this book. It's awesome. And it's really fun. Happy last day of December, if I forget to say it later, because I'm finishing this video today. <laughs> hey, here we are on escapepuzzlesupport.com. Choose your language. Here's my language. And let's see, escape puzzle, because that's what I have. Oh, they have lots of escape puzzles. My particular one is Witch's Kitchen, and here's a little thing that says, help me, help me, help. So I'm gonna click that. Are you stuck but still want to solve the riddles? Well, I don't know. You'll find important tips here that bring you closer to escaping your impending doom. Ooh, all right, so they have certain things highlighted. And some of those things I've looked at. Let's see, number one. Oh, number two, number three, number four. No. <sighs> All right, let's look at one of these with you guys. And then I, I just have to open the envelope because it's just too much. Let's see. You know what? I'm not even going to film this because I don't want to totally spoil this for anybody who might want to do it. Wow, I just looked at all the hints, and each of them probably would have taken um, a master's degree in, in in mathematics to solve. Maybe not. And, and have I have I mentioned yet that this is like a level two, level two puzzle? I don't think so. So here we go. I'm gonna open the envelope, and I'm gonna get the answer. So my guess is it has something to do with the mushroom on the table and something to do with the, you know, these things in this drawer and, and maybe a weird little guy over here that is a symbol in the book. But other than that, and I think I need to escape up there where the bat is because of one number that I figured out. Um, but let's see what the real answer is. Spoiler alert. Stop now uh, if you don't want to know. Oh, thanks for that belch. <laughs> what is that? All right. I'm opening the envelope. I need to know the answer because it's the 31st of December and got to get on with life. Got to get on with life. What's in the... What? What? All right, wait a minute. There are a bunch of numbers. Drink more Ovaltine. What? Uh, there's just a bunch of... There's just a bunch of numbers. What, is, what, is that, what does that mean? I don't even know. Do I need to study this and figure out what this means? I don't think so.